it genuinely bothers me how little gratitude people seem to have nowadays. Is there anybody there? Hello and welcome to the Mind Hustle podcast, practical advice for mastering your mindset and self-improvement. I'm your host, magician and mind reader, Dean O'Dell. Today I'm joined by Chris Piercy. Chris is a prolific blogger, life coach, host of the Gist of It podcast, and as a trained cognitive behavioral hypnotherapist and NLP practitioner, Chris helps people to achieve their life goals and ambitions. Hello and welcome, Chris. It's a pleasure to have you on the Mind Hustle podcast. Hello. I'm, that, that, that was a hell of an intro. I almost feel a bit like... Um, Khaleesi from Game of Thrones, where it says about the breaker of chains and the mother of dragons and all that. It's uh, like a full title for me. I'm going to be completely honest, that Game of Thrones reference is lost on me because I've not watched a single episode. Well, you know, you either watch it or you don't. What, what one of those things is people are very rarely is like, yeah, I catch an episode every now and again. You either don't like it or you're obsessed. I, I might enjoy it if I do watch it, but I've yet to sort of venture into that. I, I often watch these box sets, you know, months or years after they're popular. I did the same with sort of Breaking Bad. But um, we're going off on a tangent already, which I, th- I have a feeling we might do throughout this. But just jumping straight into it, really. In today's busy world, we often find ourselves striving for things that we don't have, driven often by consumerism. But when was the last time we stopped and took time to appreciate and be thankful for what we do have in the moment? And this brings us on to the topic of gratitude. So, Chris, what do we mean by gratitude and why is this something we should look to practice in our everyday lives? It genuinely bothers me how little gratitude people seem to have nowadays. I think that um, what, what we mean by gratitude is being thankful for that that we have in our lives already. And I think that, you know, you mentioned it already, consumerism is one of the driving forces behind, you know, gratitude basically disappearing. I mean, I, I, one of the things I say, you know, when I'm coaching people and one of the things I say in my podcasts and things like that is that uh, gratitude is the pathway to being content. And I, I genuinely stand by that because it's just so grounding and it really just brings you back to the moment that you're in. Whereas... You know, modern society kind of pushes thinking about the future so much and having genuine gratitude genuinely being grateful for what you have um already really just brings you back to the moment and this brings peace to your mind i think and i think for, for some people listening it can be really hard to find to find the pos- positives especially you know with the year that we've just had and you know people facing some really really tough challenges so so you know, why have you personally found gratitude to be so important in your own life and then kind of you know what advice would you give to those that are struggling to find things to be grateful for yeah i get it it's can be very difficult to find positives and you know sometimes you know you have to kind of dig deep and you know, go six foot down and move a body out of the way or something. There's always positives to come out of absolutely everything. And I mean absolutely everything. Uh, and I'll expand on that in a minute. I just think that if you're having difficulty, then you're not looking hard enough. I don't make any apology for being so brutal and blunt about that. Because I think that what's the alternative? Alternative is going, oh, everything's shit. I'm just going to sit here thinking everything's shit. Glass is empty kind of uh, philosophy. On well, the, the glass has been knocked off the table and it's on the floor. You know, it's a mindset which doesn't achieve anything whatsoever. If you're genuinely happy and content with your life, with, you know, not being able to find the positives and everything, you know, and being grumpy and whatever else, absolutely fine. But don't sit there being grumpy and complaining when you're not actually trying very hard to you know, find the positives that come out of terrible situations or, you know, or just times that are slightly bad. Like you said, it's, it is kind of a mindset. And I think if me personally, I, I always find it, I naturally find it easier to moan about something rather than find that positivity. Doing research into gratitude and things like that. And now I'm learning to change that mindset and just to look at the positives more than, than focusing on the negatives. So what we're talking about at the moment is everyday gratitude, where you're thinking about your life as a, um, in, in general terms. But if you kind of pull it, I, well, depending on how you look at it, pull it right back or go extension out to the full universe, you know, you have a rough chance of about three billion to one of even being born, you know. And if you're, you know, if you're in a Western country and if you're in modern society, 
you know, you've not been born in, into poverty in Uganda or whatever, you know, when was the last time you thought about how grateful you are for just that, the fact that not only were you lucky to be born, but you're lucky to be born in a country where, you know, you have running water and you have education and you have healthcare and you have, you know, all of the different things which, you know, just give you the foundation to do more or less anything with your life. You know, if you want to pull it right back to that, you know, that is something which is incredibly grounding, you know. So if you're having trouble finding uh, the positives in, oh, I had an argument with my friend, I'm a bit sad, and you can't find the positive in that, then go deeper. You've got a roof over your head. You've got running water. You've got electricity. You've got broadband. You've got a mobile phone. You know, a lot of people say, look, if you've, if, if you've had a meal today and you've got you're able to have a, a, a drink and you've got a roof overhead, then you better off than half of the people in the world and if you can't see that then fuck you it always makes me laugh when people get so frustrated and angry around you know can't get wi-fi or something so so silly when again you know millions of people don't don't even have like you say running water not let alone uh, access to any wi-fi connection or anything like that i interestingly i found an example online around a writer called aj jacobs who thanked everyone that was involved in making his morning coffee and he, t- he took this example to to kind of an extreme he think there were thousands of people involved in making his cup of coffee you know from the farmer who you know grew the coffee beans you know the barista uh, he thanked the designer of the logo you know for the coffee um the truck driver who drove the the, the the coffee beans there even the guy who painted the white or the yellow lines on the road that then got that truck to, to to the location so he could have his coffee. That is that is an extreme example, but it but it's a good example of taking something so simple and being grateful for for that. Yeah, and also, yeah, I mean, I I quite like the kind of example of that. I mean, it's it is extreme, but you know that this is the thing that the the more extreme you can go, and the more examples you can find of things that you can be grateful for. The, the more grateful you can then become for the bigger things that you have in your life. You know, if you really, you know, if you get to the point where you're thanking the guy who paved the road so the truck could get the coffee beans to the coffee house so that the barista that you're thankful for has made the coffee that you like and blah, 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 then when you do have, when you do achieve more or get more, then it's, um, it's something that you are even more grateful for. And I think that, too many people are um, become grateful for, for, for material things, and the material things they they don't really serve any real purpose. And if you do find it that you are in this in this state where you are grateful for material things, like oh my god, I need the new iPhone or whatever, and you know oh, I'm I'm grateful for my iPhone, um, then you kind of you're missing the whole point of the whole of the thing because there's something known as the uh, the hedonistic treadmill. Have you heard of this? No, I've not. No, no. So please. basically, it's the idea that if 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 you like are only finding that you're grateful for material things, then you are essentially you're on the hedonistic treadmill. And what that means is that, like, let's say let's go back uh, six years and let's say that you were happy having your iPhone seven. For example, and then you're, you're but you're running on this treadmill. As soon as you got the iPhone seven, you would then want the iPhone eight, and then as soon as you want the iPhone eight, you want the iPhone nine. As soon as you want the iPhone nine, yeah, you're, you're never ever grateful for what you've got because you're on this treadmill where you're always running. So if you've got a car, then you you know you you like it for a while, but then you know you're lo- if you've lost it after that car, then as soon as you've got that car, that car isn't enough because then you're lost after the next thing. And this can be applied to you know your your phone, it'd be your car, it could be your house. You know, if you're really bad, it could be your partner. You know, it's you know, we, we, you you see it in, you know, I don't know. Executives is always the kind of cliche. They have a secretary that they run off, and then they get to that secretary, and then they get end up that goes ends up falling to pieces, and they find that they have the next partner and the next partner. These you know, these people who have a succession of failed relationships. Mm-hmm. The reason that they fail is because they're never grateful for what they have in the in that moment with that partner. Because they are, they found themselves on this hedonistic treadmill, and as soon as they've got something, because they've achieved that thing, it's then not enough for them. 
No, and then they're looking for the for the improvement. And I think we're all guilty of that at some points so in our lives. The example of, you know, having wanting the new latest phone and that kind of thing. But so why is gratitude not woven into our lives? And what is it that, you know, gets in the way of us, us practicing gratitude? Because it's, it's such a simple act to just to be thankful. But for whatever reason in, in our culture, it's, it's not something we naturally seem to do. Well, I, I think it's, if you want to go really deep, it's essentially, it's capitalism. It's consumerism. Um, and it's uh, social media, you know, all, all of those things. Think about in any com- most companies, you know, I'm going to, I would say all companies, but there are some that are right. But most companies, the marketing strategy is basically this in a nutshell. You shouldn't be happy with what you've got because you haven't got this in your life. If you have this in your life, you will then be happy. But the problem is that as soon as they've got that and then the n- new thing comes out, I know you thought you were happy with this, but you actually need this. But then, and then bikes, you know, the other thing is that alongside that, you have um, social media where people are putting their, putting out the lives that they want people to see. And, you know, it's what you see is never the reality. And people know this, but they forget this. So that if you see, some guy outside his big house with his Lamborghini, with a the hot girlfriend or whatever, people will sit there and go, well, I want that. <laughs> Without actually having any, I think people are, you know what, it, forget, forget any of what I've just said. I think the bottom line is about why it's not woven into society is that people have absolutely zero fucking self-awareness whatsoever. You know, people think that the big house people think that the car people think that the hot girlfriend or hot boyfriend is going to make them happy and it, they don't actually have any awareness whatsoever of the things that are actually going to make them happy normally that's just having someone there who loves them chasing that dream that you know that financial goal or, or the big house like you say they're only going to need one a bigger house or you know more money like you say it's, you've got to get off of that treadmill and in turn people meet, might be listening to this thinking that i'm crazy or something but i think ultimately people need to work out what's going to make them happy and the way that you do that is you have a conversation with your three-year-old self so would you like to play a game dean let's yeah let's play a game okay so it's it's called me annoy the hell out of you okay Um, (laughs) what would make you happy what would you what do you think would make you happy dean right now yeah i might fall into a bit of a trap here but uh yeah financial security why so that me and my wife can travel more why? To experience new things, food, culture. Why? Because that's something we enjoy and makes us happy. Why? Do you see where this is going? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it's it's it's, it's about getting to your core values. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, you have to have this conversation with someone who's just basically saying why. You know, there are other questions other than why, but you know, why works for everything that you said. Yeah. But ultimately, you said you wanted financial security, and then five questions later, 20 seconds later, you're saying that ultimately it just comes down to the feeling of experiencing something with your partner. Yeah. It's, it's never what people think it is. Happiness is it's often so much simpler. And that's not, that's not to say that financial security shouldn't be something that you want, because that's, you know, that's, a, that's a good thing to, to desire. But you know, there are, it is possible to be happy without that um because you I mean just in those few questions you get down to the nitty-gritty and go well yes you know what if i'm with my wife and we're just doing something nice together yeah i don't need to travel halfway around the world to to experience that exactly it's not it's not and this is never to say that you shouldn't you don't need to shall we say um i feel i've not quite covered something that i feel like i should have covered with regards to finding positives so there will be people perhaps listening to this you know when i said that you you should always find gratitude and absolutely everything there will be people saying well i experienced this and it was absolutely horrific um you know it was the absolute worst thing imaginable um why why can i why should i possibly feel happy about that why should there be possibly find any positives whatsoever now there's two parts of this i think are really important to cover so if you have had something absolutely horrific happen to you so i I can use my own example here um so about five five and a half years ago i lost my one of my best friends to suicide like 
absolutely horrific for me, his family, his wife, and you know everyone around. Like out of the blue, boom, gone. Fuck, awful. Yeah, and you know that you know that would you know I would categorize that as about one of the worst things that can happen to you. You know, up, you know, not quite. You know, losing a child would kind of trump that. But there aren't many other other things. You know, that could be more. You know gut punching than that and you go well how, how the hell how the hell is there anything positive or good to find out of that and why would you even want to well this is the thing you can either he's dead he's dead to be kind of very cold and kind of straight and logic about it you then have the choice of whether you are gonna you know obviously i'm not discounting grieving out of this but you've got the choice of whether you're going to accept that or whether you're not going to accept that if you don't accept it you're just constantly looking at the past constantly you know becoming upset by this thing happening by accepting it you can just go right that that is the foundation to move forward from and from there you can either continue to feel horrible and sad about it happening or you can go right what what small glimmer of happiness what silver lining what golden nugget can i pull out of this situation in order to try and just make this even one percent positive and that's not just like discount the grief or anything else like that but and the one thing that i found is that it made the friendships that i had with the people who were a mutual friend of ours it made them so much stronger so much tighter and it made um maybe so much more grateful for those people that i had around me you would never ever choose to have your best friend commit suicide you'd never choose that but once it's happened you can you can then choose to find some good things to come out of it because what's the alternative hashtag rant and and for those that are struggling to find the, that positive do you, do you have any practical ways of sort of you know practicing gratitude well the the the, the most common one is to um write a gratitude journal now i i i used to do this but i don't do this anymore um i'll i'll say what I, i'll go over both the things that i do and then i'll do talk about another thing as well which is a bit weird um so yeah the gratitude journal is the idea of that every single day you write down something that you are grateful for you know you can or you can just start by just writing down as many things as you can possibly think of and, but every day you go back through that list and you add something else to it and the idea being that the the more you you know go through it the deeper you have to go and like and like you said the, about the guy going deep on the the fact that who helped him have his cup of coffee you know the, the further along you go with this the deeper your mind has to go and find things to be grateful for um and then going back over the list kind of just reminds you of those things that you should be grateful for so that that's something that's really good um i don't do that anymore i do a positivity list most helpful thing and the thing that I've managed to stick to the longest, because these things can kind of come and go from your life. For the last 11 months nearly, every single day, without fail, I've made my positivity list. I cannot, I cannot go to sleep until I've done it. No, just, it's, just to clarify, what, what, what's the difference between the gratitude list and, and a positivity list? So a gratitude list is looking at your life as a whole spectrum of everything and writing down what you should be grateful for positivity list is for me is writing down all of the positive things that happened on that day um which sounds like it's not it's not the it's like a positivity diary for the day so you say um got up on in good time and got the kids to school with no hassle positive you know recorded the podcast with dean positive you know you need to write down all the different things that you can feel good about so that even even on the shittest days, you you know, and and those are the days where it's most important to dive in. And you, know, and you might even only find three things on days where everything goes completely to shit. But you know, if you can find one thing, then that you know. Yeah, I mean, I've I've tried the journaling, and you know, one of the tasks has always been you know write three things that you're you're grateful for, and I, I sort of have always stumbled on that. But just thinking about it, as you've said about positive things that have happened i could quite easily f- find more examples of that throughout my day than i possibly would with with the gratitude i think it'd be an easier exercise to sort of get myself into thinking about gratitude and positivity 
I'm thinking now, I've sat here, we're grateful for the heating. We lived in a an old coach house um, a year or so ago, and I'm looking outside now, and, it, and it's snowing, and I'm actually not too cold in the house, whereas the previous house, the heating was, was dreadful. So I'm grateful now we were in a house which is which is warm. And, uh, you know, it's if you haven't experienced that, I suppose that that cold house, then you you take maybe take for granted some of the things like like the heating. So can I can I share a kind of a quote with you which changed everything for me? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah. So there's a quote from Epicurus, and this is when I was um, when I was a hypnotherapist, you had to do a continuous professional development, and on one of the um, one of the weeks, my hypnotherapy tutor was doing this presentation, and it was all about stoicism, and that kind of ignited my you know my love of like philosophy and gratitude and everything but there was this one quote from epicurus um it quote varies a little bit depending on where you get it get it from but um in essence it says do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not what you have now was once among that which you desired so thinking about your situation just then when you're in that cold house i bet you were sat there going oh i really wish we had heating that worked i really wish i could just be in my house and be warm um and then once you're in that warm house you forget how great it is to have that warm house and yeah you you have got the fear of taking it for granted unless you're going through these exercises and that those thoughts around yeah being grateful for what you've what you've got if it... so if you yeah if you're struggling with it think about what you've got now and think back to a time when you really wished that you had what you have now and realize that yeah i've actually got all the stuff that i desperately wanted and to sit there and go yeah i'm actually really grateful for the fact that i've got it now i i heard that quote and i don't know why what it was i think it was just a particular time in my life or something but yeah, my jaw nearly hit the floor, and I was just like, "Holy shit, that is that's brilliant." Listening to you today, I can definitely hear the stoic way of thinking. It actually made me remember that it was you that sort of got me into sort of looking into that area of stoicism from recommending Ryan Holiday's "The Obstacle Is the Way," um, which Great I. Book. Yeah, which I read at the beginning of sort of lockdown. It sort of really sort of struck a chord with me and looking at that in a, in a stoic sort of way. So, yeah, that obstacle is in the way. And you've got, like you said at the beginning, you've got a choice of either sort of um, sitting and moping about, about the situation or you can be a bit more, you know, proactive. Well, yeah, I mean, ultimately, when a situation has happened and the situation is then defined as this is it, you know, then your reaction to that is not going to change the fact that it's happened no. to put it in real layman's terms. You know, if, uh, if like in terms of like sport, if a player has been sent off the pitch and then they're not on the pitch anymore, the other players can sit around moaning about the fact that they have to play with 10 men or they can go, right, how are we going to play with 10 men and still win or save this game or whatever? You know, that, like if you just sit around and go, Oh God, I can't believe you got sent off, blah, 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 blah. And, Looking at it from that point of view, then you know you're never going to do well. But going right, okay, what's the positives of that? Okay, we've got a little bit more space in the midfield or whatever. You know, looking looking at it from that point of view and going right, this is the definite situation. How are we going to make this work? Rather than going, oh fuck this situation, this is rubbish. In order for everyone sort of listening to to reflect on these things that they are grateful for, you know, what questions should they be asking themselves? It's a very weird exercise that you can do. Um, this is about as stoic as it gets. And the idea it's called the premeditation of evils. Um, in, in Latin, it sounds a lot cooler than that. <laughs> Premeditare or something like that. But um, yeah, the idea is to, it's like, a, it is a, like a meditation type exercise. So the idea is to sit there, close your eyes and think about everything in your life. So think about, you know, think about your partner, think about your house, think about your car, think about your possessions, think about your family, think about your friends, think about literally everything. Like build up a huge picture in your head of everything that you you have in your life. And then once you've got that, one by one, you start, imagine losing it. So imagine your wife dies. 
Imagine your family all die. Imagine your friends all die. Imagine losing your house. Imagine losing your car. Imagine losing, and it's a really shit feeling. Just go through imagining losing everything until you're left with just the clothes on your back. And then imagine losing them. Imagine yourself basically sat butt naked in the middle of nowhere with nothing. And it's bloody horrible. I've done it a couple of times, and it feels horrific. It genuinely feels awful if you go through this. And then you go, hang on a minute. This is all just in my imagination. I haven't lost my wife. I haven't lost my friends. You start restoring <laughs> that image. Yeah. Because basically, the, the, the expression that is, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. Mm -hmm. This is the ultimate way in knowing what you've got before it's gone. So it's a weird exercise. It does feel really, really horrible. But it's that horrible feeling that it gives you that then allows you to then um, you know, have that full gratuity for or gratefulness for the things that you mentally decided to lose yeah. so that that is one of the most powerful things you can do um you know, honestly it feels like shit but uh, yeah, yeah i can imagine going through it and at that low point you are going to feel shit but i think if you start to then rebuild that I, i've not gone through this exercise myself but is there a sort of a, a bit of a, a buzz of, you know feeling a positivity once you've restored all of those things oh and... yeah absolutely, absolutely i mean the the, the idea is that you you get to this kind of low point where you feel like you, you have lost everything and then you don't, um, you don't go through this restorative process. Essentially what you do is you then you can open your eyes and just kind of realize that it is just all in your imagination. And it's like a, a slap in the face of, yeah, you know how you were, you were moaning this morning about the fact there wasn't enough hot water for your shower and it was only four minutes Honestly, shut the fuck up. Your life's great. Like, if you're listening to this right now, your life is pretty close to perfect. You, you have so many things that so many other people don't have. So if you yeah, if you have the ability to listen to this right now and you're hearing me ranting on and being preachy as fuck, then your life is pretty perfect. And if you don't realise that, then you know, go through that exercise. So, yeah. so what is the answer? What can we do to get more people to be more grateful do, do we need a, a, a thanksgiving in the uk i don't know but I, i'm interested actually to look into sort of having this conversation and, and the research i wonder having thanksgiving in america i wouldn't suspect that they're any more grateful than anywhere else in the world even though they have a day dedicated to it and i think it's about doing this on a day-to-day -day basis and growing that that that, that attitude around around grat gratitude basically couldn't agree more with what you're saying and you know it's, it needs to be a day-to-day -day thing i think that the you know the the idea of you know, dedicating a day to it you know I, I think i think that meaning was lost probably a couple of hundred years ago in terms in terms of how you change it i, I you know the attitude towards it, i think that you just start with yourself i, I know I, I blogged about this um because i asked myself the question is it possible to be unhappy if you're fully grateful for everything that you, ha you have in your life I don't. I don't think it's possible. If you achieve one hundred percent gratitude, which I'm not sure is possible. But if you were to achieve one hundred percent gratitude, could you be unhappy? And I don't, I don't think you could. I, I honestly don't think you could. And I think that that's probably true. And I'm not really entirely sure how you measure measure gratitude as a percentage. But you know, you get if you get eighty percent plus on your gratitude level, then you're going to struggle to be unhappy. Well, I'm being a little bit blasé about. You know achieving this but it is entirely possible you know you know if, if, if i look at my life this year my life my life on paper right now is pretty awful you know with you know the, the things that i've had to i've had a worse 2020 than most in terms of the stuff that i've had to deal with and go through but my mindset towards life is still you know is still positive and i still you know it's you know i have my bad days and things feel pretty shit sometimes but it's really easy just to, you know, come back and actually look at what I'm grateful for. And that kind of, you know, sets me, sets my compass right again. So when you do have those bad days, it is going through the, you know, the gratitude and, and being grateful for, for what you have got that, that sort of maybe picks you up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 
that positivity lists thing that I I do that is that has been groundbreaking for me really it's really I wouldn't say turns things around but it's definitely given me the mindset to focus on the on the right things yeah you mentioned just briefly that that you've got a blog on this and I just wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about just coaching and then the gist of it sort of podcast as well so yeah just coaching is my uh, life coaching business so essentially I mean life coaching has got a bit of a strange um airy fluffiness around it as it being kind of a bit like I don't know what the right word is I use the word wanky um you know a wanky thing oh I'm a life coach um but the, the way I describe it quite simply is that you are somewhere at the moment and you want and you want to be somewhere else my job is to get you from where you are to where you want to be you know and that's done through accurate goal setting looking at the obstacles which are standing in your way finding the way around those obstacles and then taking the actions to make sure that those you actually get around those obstacles and then you know Part of my job is motivation. Part of it is accountability. Part of it is a shoulder to cry on, uh, and part of it is just like good, solid advice, you know, and uh, you know techniques and you know that sort of thing that are going to get people from where they are to where they want to be. It doesn't have to involve chakras or vision boards or any of that shit. It's just you know more or less it's a conversation with me once a week. Sort out your problems, point you in the right direction, and give you a big bloody push in that direction. <laughs> Um, on the gist of it podcast um, you know that's has tips and advice and bits on there but it's conversations about people and their lives and their mental health and you know what's helped them you know to o- overcome the issues that they've had sounds really really good and uh, you know where can where can our listeners uh, sort of connect with you online to 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 access these things so you can head to uh, gistcoaching.co.uk that's just g-y-s-t that's get your shit together uh, just coaching uh, you can find more, uh, links to the podcast on there and the blog um, I've just as of well I'm not sure when this recording is going out but as of uh, today ish there's uh, some free training about which is called surviving living and thriving when the whole world seems to have gone to shit that's an hour long training all about you know getting a good mindset get setting yourself good goals and you know, how to achieve them all of that stuff um on Instagram, it's just life coaching, and same on Facebook as well. Um, yeah, that should be all of the links that people need in order to get in touch. I'll, I'll obviously make sure to put them in the, the show notes below. So, I just have three questions I want to ask every guest. And, and the first one is Can you share your favorite quote? And I know you also have some interesting ideas around motivational quotes and, and, and how to take that motivation and turn it into something meaningful. So, I'm really interested to hear what your, your answer is to this one. Well, the quote, my favourite quote, is the quote that I um, I already shared. So that that's the one I go for. That's so. That's, Do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. That which you have was once among that which you desired. So that is my absolute favourite. Um, you know, personal quote that I give out is: Are you going to play the cards that you've been dealt, or are you going to sit there bitching about your shitty cards? Um, that's and I think that really sums up you know what we've been talking about today with gratitude yeah perfect. exactly and yeah in terms of what you think you see a lot of life coaches and instagram influencers and blah 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 sharing quotes about life and it genuinely bothers me because i think that often people are sharing these quotes as a sort of um self-development development virtue signaling that they're going oh yeah this is how i live my life it's like they don't like if you're sharing something about gratitude whilst also putting photos up of your gold iPhone, then you know you are not you're you're literally not doing that. So I think that motivational quotes are great, but you should only really be you know playing a part in sharing them if that's actually actually how you live your life or how you're intending to live your life. If you're just sharing them to go, yeah, this sounds like I'm a cool person who is very self aware and um, whatever, then bullshit absolute worst and i've seen this a few times is when people are sharing something and it's normally like a friend that used to go to school with or something but they they share a quote and you know that they're sharing it because they want someone else to see it and think oh they've moved on or whatever it's usually like bitching about an ex or something like that. don't don't share that dickhead 
Oh. No. <laughs> no, that's that's completely the wrong the wrong reason for for sharing a motivational quotes anyway. So yeah. the second question, can you recommend something that you have been inspired by? So it might be a book, a piece of music, or even art. It's entirely up to you, but something our listeners might might enjoy. Um, not a cat video. That's not, my, my one stipulation. Not a cat video. Um, or guinea pigs. What, 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 <laughs> not guinea pigs either. Oh, you, you, you're, you're running the well dry. Um, I'll I tell you what um, really inspires me. There is a pianist called Russo on YouTube, and that's R O U S E A U. Um, and watch his video of him playing La Campanella. So it's an incredibly difficult piece of music to play. And bearing in mind, I'm not, I'm not musical anyway. But he also is a, he has the notes visualized as he's playing them. And it's just a beautiful piece of music. And the skill level required is absolutely astounding. And you see how many notes he's playing. And you see the timing and everything, and it's just even if you, even if you're not into classical music whatsoever, even if you're not into music whatsoever, you just can appreciate the skill. Just and... Go and watch it, and it's five minutes long. It will possibly be the most impressive five minutes of your day. So give give that a whirl because I think it's it's genuinely inspiring. It's just a it's just a, one of those oh my god humans are awesome type things. Uh, but yeah, I can imagine he's making it look effortless as well, which is annoyingly so. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful. I'll check that out for sure. Um, so, the last one is just any words of wisdom you would like to leave with our listeners. Um, like I said, gratitude is the pathway to being content. I mean, I I, I believe that above anything else. And the other thing I think is important to understand, you know, I could talk for months about this is the idea of control so you know if anything comes up that bothers you and you're in you know, comes into your life and is bothering you just take a moment and ask yourself do i have any control over the situation if you do have control over the situation then do whatever you can about it if you don't have any control of the situation let it go you can't do anything about it so why put your energy into it why put your effort into it why let it take up your brain space just let it go yeah and i think that's really relevant for the for the times that we find ourselves in you know right now thank you chris it, you know it's been a pleasure to talk to you today about about gratitude and i think our listeners go away with some real sort of actionable steps of you know being more grateful on a on a daily basis and uh, yeah i just want to thank you for for taking the time to to talk to me and my listeners today my absolute pleasure happy to come and rant at people again i just wanted to take the opportunity again to thank chris piercy for joining me on the podcast i hope you enjoyed this episode and i hope it made you think about gratitude in your own life and i would encourage you now to think about the things that you are grateful for try giving chris's positivity list exercise a go and let me know how you get on and if you do share your gratitude or positivity list on instagram don't forget to tag in the mind hustle podcast as always, check out all the links to everything we have spoken about in the show notes below. And please do head over to Apple Podcasts to leave a review. It makes such a difference. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be the first to know when the next episode is available. And until then, I'm Dean O'Dell, and this is the Mind Hustle Podcast. Thank you for listening.